Hello and welcome to the London Business Analysts Group. Today we're going to be talking about basic relationships within Power BI. Today we're going to look at the different types of relationships within Power BI. These are one-to-one, -one, which are rarely used, one-to-many, which form the basis of most of our reports, and many-to-many, -many, which is a more advanced topic, but nevertheless has its own specific user cases. We're also going to look at relationships versus no relationships. So why do we bother using relationships at all? And what are the advantages of doing this? Hopefully by the end of this, you'll see that relationships have a huge amount of value and you'll start using them in your own reporting. So now let's move on and look at the one-to-one -one relationship. Imagine you have three products, A, B, and C. Within this table, we have a product category for each product. We also have a second table with the same three products and a product subcategory. Consequently, we can create a one-to-one -one relationship between these tables. This means there's only one instance of each product within each table. For instance, product A appears once in the category table and once in the subcategory table. However, we would not usually do this. Instead, we'd create a single table combining both the category and subcategory. Let's now look at this in Power BI. Here we can see we have a one-to-one -one relationship between these two tables. We can see this as we have a one on either side of the relationship. And here we can see that instead of the one-to-one -one relationship, we've combined this into one table. Let's now visualise this to see the challenges. To do that, let's click on the Visualisation tab. Firstly, let's create a visual using the two tables approach. Let's take category from category, subcategory from product subcategory, and product from product subcategory as well. So this works as expected. We now have a visual which shows the category, subcategory, and product. Alternatively, let's use the combined table to create the same visual. To do this, let's expand our single table and add this into the fiat fields. We can now see in the combined table we also have category, subcategory and product. So this produces the same result as before, however it's much easier for the user and everything is grouped together in one logical place. You can only do this by combining the tables. Now let's look at the one-to-many relationship. One-to-many is the approach we use most of the time. You can see here that we have a one-to-many relationship where the product appears once in the dimension table, the table on the left-hand side, but multiple times in the fact table, the table on the right-hand side. The one side of the table filters the many side of the table. For instance, if we look at the sale of product A, it will filter the fact table to just those which contain product A. In this instance, it returns the value of 30, 10 plus 10 plus 10. If instead we filter on product B, we see this filters only one row of the data and returns the value of 10. Let's now look at this in Power BI. Here we have the one-to-many relationship in Power BI. We can see this one-to-many as we have a one on the one side and a star indicating the many side. Let's now look at this in a visualization. So on the visualization tab, let's go to the right-hand side and start dragging on our fields onto our visual. Firstly, let's add our product hierarchy from the one side of the relationship. And secondly, let's add our value from our many side of the relationship. We can now see that product A, product B and product C all have their own value based upon that relationship. Now let's move on to the more advanced topic of many to many. Here we have our three products again, A, B and C. However, in this instance, we have multiple versions of A, B and C because they are supplied by different suppliers. For instance, product A was supplied by supplier X between 2018 and 2019 and supplied by supplier Y between 2019 and 2021. We also have multiple features per product. For instance, product B is both handmade and luxury. This is causing us to have a many-to-many -many relationship. As you can see, there are multiple instances of product C on both sides of the relationship. Let's see what this does in practice. If we sell £30 of product A, which is both blue and handmade, we get traditional behaviour. There's £30 for blue, handmade, and all the totals add up. However, if we now add product B, we see a different behaviour. Product B is red, and also both luxury and handmade. We can see that we have £10 against handmade and £10 against luxury, but the total does not add up to 20 but only to the £10. This is because product B does only have sales of £10 but it's also classified as both handmade and luxury. 
If we add a third product, we see the same issue. This shows product C, which is designer and luxury. Again, the totals do not add up, as we'd intuitively expect. Individually, however, this is not too complicated. The complexity comes when we add it all together. Here we can see across the top that product A at £30, product B at £10 and product C at £20 equals to £60. However, when we add up handmade, luxury and designer, that also equals £60 in the table below. And this type of behaviour can be very confusing to end users. So let's look at this in Power BI. Here we can see that many-to-many -many relationship between product features and products. The star on either side indicates the many-to-many -many relationship. We can then see the standard one-to-many relationship between sales and product. Let's look at what this looks like within a visual. So let's navigate it back to the visual tab. Let's go to the right-hand side and look at our fields. With fields, let's take our features and drag them onto the rows. Let's also take our sales value and drag that onto our values. Now you can see the same behavior that we saw on the slides. This is likely to be very confusing to end users, so you have to be really confident they understand what's going on before introducing this type of behaviour. Now that we've looked at the different types of relationships, let's consider why we'd consider a model with relationships as to one without. This is just a quick overview, and we're going to dive into it in a bit more detail. But you should know that no relationships leads to a poor user experience, internal inconsistencies, repetition of data, the inability to combine across different grains, and little flexibility within the measures themselves. With relationships, you end up with a better user experience. It's internally consistent. You end up with a reduced repetition of data, the ability to combine across different grains, and you're able to leverage the power of DAX, which gives you real flexibility within your measures themselves. Here we have a pivot table built of a single table of data. You can see here that all the fields are together in one homogeneous group. This makes it very difficult to identify the different areas, for instance, to pull out just the customer data or to pull out just the date data. You should also be able to see that we have two Europe's within our data. One of the Europe's isn't spelt wrong, is missing an E. We've now added a second pivot table to the right-hand side. This pivot table, however, is built off the data model with relationships. Notice how customer data is all grouped together under a nice, easy to use customer grouping. This is the same for product, date, and all of the other tables that we have. Also note that Europe spelling error has now been corrected. Because the Europe is on the one side of the relationship, there can only be one spelling for Europe, and that resolves the internal inconsistencies, and also results in there being less data in your model, because Europe doesn't have to be repeated for every single line. We are now going to have a look at how the relationship approach allows you to compare data across different grains. Here we have a single product category table with our three product categories, chair, table, and lamp. We have a one-to-many relationship with our products table, which contains each of our individual products, products A, B, C, and D. This table has a subsequent relationship, which is also a one-to-many, which goes to our sales table. Therefore, if we filter our product category on lamp, we can see that this filter propagates through to our products table and filters our two products, which are lamps product C and product D. And this then filters across to our sales table, which contains our three sales, which add up to 30, 10 plus 10 plus 10. We now add an additional table, which is our budget. However, this budget is at a different granularity to our sales data. Whilst our sales data is at a product level of granularity, our budget is only set at the product category level. We can, however, join this up using our product category table this then results in an additional one-to-many relationship. If we now filter LAMP, we can see that it continues to propagate through to the product table and to the sales table. However, it also propagates across the budget table and we can see that the budget for LAMP is six plus 15, 21. This is how relationships can help us report across different granularities. The final thing to note is that you can leverage the power of DAX to create more complex calculations. For instance, even though the budget is only set at a product category level, you could use the prior year sales in order to allocate across all the different products. You could then compare actuals versus budgets at a product level. Thank you for joining us for today's session on basic relationships within Power BI. Please leave any comments below.